This is Block 5, the Roaring Twenties, Section 3, A Change in Society, uh, the section with, uh, started with movies. The 1920s were the golden age of American cinema, the golden age of film. Um, movies had been around since about the 1880s, uh, but they were mostly short, and they would play uh, in something that you, uh, that you called a Nickelodeon. Uh, that the movie would play in a little box, and for a nickel, you'd put your money in the box, and you'd look at it, and you would uh, watch the movie. But by the 1920s, uh, the filming technology had improved to the point where you could film, you know, large-scale, big-screen movies, and then show them in these beautiful movie theaters. As you see from our picture, movies was, I mean, everybody went to the movies all the time. Um, and the, the theaters that they built for them were, were stunning, were beautiful. I mean, look at this movie theater uh, in New York City, in Washington Heights in the 1920s. And people dressed up to go to the movies. You'd wear a hat and a shirt and a tie. Uh, and women would dress up, almost like you were going to the theater. Um, and people would go to see movies all the time. The first full-length modern movie, and film historians consider this to be the first real movie a uh, full-length movie with modern filmmaking techniques uh, was called The Birth of a Nation, uh, and it was directed by a guy by the name of D.W. Griffiths. And you might be thinking as you look at it, what on earth is this about? Is that a member of the Ku Klux Klan? Yes, it is. Uh, the, birth of the, nation, the Birth of a Nation told the story about how the wonderful Klan grew up in the South uh, to protect it from, you know, Yankees and carpetbaggers and other bad influences like free black people uh, in the South. It's incredibly racist, and to watch Birth of a Nation today uh, kind of turns your stomach, but it is the first modern movie um, and that was made with kind of modern direction and modern filmmaking uh, techniques. They were silent, that the technology did not yet exist to sync audio with uh, the video that you were looking at. So Americans went to movie theaters to see the stars of the silent screen. Men like Charlie Chaplin, who I'm sure you recognize, he has a very famous look. Um, and they used physical comedy and slapstick um, to entertain their audiences. And when there was a need for dialogue, the movie would kind of, the, the picture would go away, and it would, it would be replaced by a dialogue card up on the movie theater. Here, some character, I don't know who it is, is saying, I am going to, tra I am going to travel far and wide to the country of thieves and ghosts. Um, and then the card would go away, and the movie would continue. And through the 1920s, it's the golden age of the silent film, with people going to those theaters, you know, it's a shared cultural experience again. It's like radio in that sense, that everyone in the United States will have seen the latest Charlie Chaplin movie. Charlie Chaplin becomes an American celebrity. People all over the country know Charlie Chaplin's last movie. There is, there is forming in the 1920s this national pop culture, this national popular culture, you know, through the radio and through movies that people buy into. In 1927, the first talking picture came out, and it was Al Jolson in The Jazz Singer. Um, and it tells the story of a person torn between his traditional immigrant family who want him to use his singing talents to become a cantor in the synagogue, you know, singing traditional religious music, and the, Al, the character here, the jazz singer, who wants nothing more, you know, than to sing jazz, to sing the latest, you know, the latest hip, fashionable, popular music. Uh, and this was the first movie that synchronized what was going on in the movie with a soundtrack so that you could hear the people speak while you were watching them. Of course, this is a much better way to watch movies, and the silent film stars fell you know, out of popularity very quickly. And by the end of the 1920s, all of the movies that people, that Americans were going to watch, by the millions a week, so much more than now, um, Americans were seeing the talkies, films that um, had sound. This is another example of this culture with people with spare time and spare money. You know, if you're, you can't go to the movies if you don't have spare time and spare money. But now, for the first time, most Americans, unless you are down at the very bottom of the economic ladder, most Americans can spare some money, at least, to go see a movie, 
you know, once or twice a month. It's leisure. And not only do they have the money, they have the time. They're not working, you know, 14 hours in a factory anymore. They're not working from sunup till sundown on the farm anymore uh, in towns and cities in America. People have time for leisure, for fun, uh, for entertainment. And radio provided it, movies provided it, and as we're going to see in a moment, sports provided it as well.